What is up everyone and welcome to a good old fashioned power PC based video. This video isn't going to be mind blowing or anything crazy. I'm basically having a clear out as you guys know I've been clearing out for the past six months or so but I've stepped it up a little bit recently because I want to uh, clear out things a bit quicker before I move. Um, to date I thought I'd capture a little bit of my clearing out process and that is me fiddling about a little bit with these power Macs and getting rid of at least one of them today hopefully or starting the process to get rid of one of them whether I put it on eBay or whatever I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with it I kind of wait until the spur of the moment kind of idea takes me but anyway these towers are building up everywhere I've got a lot of power max but I've also got a lot of computer towers in general but let's just talk max for a second I've got these two quicksilvers and they came from the Powerhack G4 project. Never used them. The only thing I used was the power button out of this one. As you guys know, it took me two attempts to get my power button to work. So the case that I actually built the Hackintosh in, uh, that power button is no more. So I used this one. So I'm waiting for a power button to show up on, on eBay. A power button board. The whole assembly with the LED in the board and everything. Um, they don't, the Quicksilver ones don't pop up very often for some reason, but this one is complete and this one is nearly complete. So two Quicksilvers, I'll hopefully be getting rid of one of them today. Um, so moving on to taking a look at the rest of the systems, I got these two, like I said, that is my MDD, my Beast Dual 1.42 MDD, um, SATA controller, X800 XT, all the juicy goodness in there. It's a little bit stripped back at the moment because I don't have a DVD drive, an SSD or a hard drive in there. Basically all the drives have been taken out to be repurposed, um, but I hope to revisit this in 2016. I also have the G5 tower and downstairs I have another G4 tower, which, which is of course the Hackintosh, my G3 tower and my Mac Pro. So all in all, that is seven Mac towers, not including my gaming PC, a couple of the other PCs that I've got about the place and that iMac and stuff. So uh, long story short, I need to get rid of some of these machines. Now, this is the Quicksilver that we're gonna be focusing on today. They're both 800 megahertz machines, but what I've done is I've stripped all of the memory out of them because I wanted to get as much memory as I could in this one. So I've managed to salvage between the two systems, a 512 stick and two 256 meg sticks. So this will have a gigabyte and this one will be left with a lonely 256 meg. But I will dig through my RAM and I'll probably be able to find another couple of 256 meg sticks to put in there to bring it up to hopefully uh, 768 or at the very least 512. But that machine is not a concern of mine at the moment. I'm gonna stick this gigabyte of RAM in and then this machine will be complete um, with pretty much all of the original parts or yeah, all of the original parts actually which is really cool. Hopefully some of you will find this video relatively interesting. This G4 works, it's got Tiger on it, so is the other one, um, but this may be the machine that is password protected, I'm not sure, so I may be doing a fresh install of Tiger on here. Um, we will hook it up to the test setup downstairs, but what I'm actually gonna do first, it's very hard putting RAM in one-handed with your left hand, and this footage is not too great from up here, is it? The lighting and everything is a bit rough. But like I said, old school style video, I can't get this RAM in. I'm gonna stop the camera and ram the RAM into the motherboard and then continue. I just went salvaging through my little box here just to look if I had any more RAM in here. Um, this is the 800 megahertz CPU from the other system. I was kind of gutted that I gathered together all of these G4s and they were all the exact same model. I guess it was pretty handy in a way, but I would have liked some variety. I was really hoping to get a dual one gigahertz system to play with, because I've always been curious about those. But there's the uh, G4 processor and all the other parts of the G4 system. There's actually two hard drives under there as well, under that fan, the original uh, 80 gig and a 160 gig WD Blue IDE drive, which is actually quite nice. Um, but yeah, no RAM in there. So I've either already salvaged it or it's in a different box um, because I'm kind of losing track of everything. There is the motherboard from the other G4 system. And there is the heat sink. Now I do have another box. Here it is, there's the power supply back there as well. I have this ice cream tub, but I don't think this has RAM in it. I think this has got all the little screws, fixtures and fittings, there we have it and a couple of smaller ribbon, ribbon cables um, for the Quicksilver. So I've got a complete Quicksilver in parts as well, um, but that's of no interest to us because it's basically the exact same system once again. I will be selling all those parts separately, but 
well, maybe together. I have no idea, to be honest, guys. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do because one problem that I'm faced with at the moment is a lot of the stuff that I have, a lot of the junk that I have, is not worth anything, um, either on its own or as a bundle or whatever. And that goes for G4 parts. Um, but I want to try and make as much money as I can because all of this stuff, when I sell it, all of this stuff contributes to uh, future channel projects. I make sure that all of the money I get from the geeky nerd stuff goes back into the geeky nerd stuff. Anyway, um, I am going to tidy up a little bit up here and get this system down to my bedroom. And then we're going to have some fun with it and see what we can do. So guys, one thing I've started doing is plugging in an aux cable um, into the Mac. And I've got a really good length one just to reach down to the input, the front input on my surround sound receiver. So that's really cool. So if I boot up the Mac. You guys may have been able to tell that that bonged through the, uh, through the surround sound. You probably couldn't tell that actually, but nevertheless. So this system is booting up. Let me just get a better front row seat. It's not the quietest Quicksilver I've ever heard in my life, but nevertheless, it fires up and works, as you guys can see, Apple logo, in a funky resolution. So if I do sell this on eBay, I'll probably leave it as it is. Um, there's no point adding any kind of upgrades or whatever. I don't really have anything that I could put in it. The only thing that I could really put in it is another hard drive and a Wi-Fi card and that. But I naturally assume that if someone's buying one of these, they're going to do that themselves anyway. Plus, it does not add value, so it's a waste of parts this end. Um, but one thing that I would do probably is load it up with a couple of cool apps just to get people started. You know, um, I've got a nice collection of various funky power PC apps that would be fine to include. So definitely taking it sweet time to boot. There we go. Mac OS X. And after waiting all that time, do we have a password? I don't think think so because we had the little loading dialogue. Oh, is this the system that stays on the blue screen? I did have one that stayed on the blue screen, did I? I can't even remember, guys. That's that's half the reason why I'm firing all these back up again. Um, it's just to refresh my memory. Of course, I have limited space in my brain and a lot of things have happened this year, so trying to get some of this stuff shifted out of the way is fairly important, but I need to remind myself of what the, you know, what's actually going on. So this one is stuck on the blue screen, guys. I've been waiting here a while now, so that intrigues me, and it wants—it makes me want to eject this disc. So if I press the power button and hold down the mouse button, excellent! It has indeed opened, and the disc is okay. 54 megabits per second Wi-Fi USB adapter, 802.11b slash G. This is for Microsoft 2000 XP Vista Windows 7 or Mac OS 10.3 and 10.4 or Linux. Interesting. So we're at the blue screen again. I'm going to grab my screwdriver. I'm going to yank the power and I'm going to swap the drive. So I've just been upstairs and I ripped out the other drive. It is a Seagate, but I noticed that it is not the Apple original. So I'm going to swap the drive for now. But what I may do later on in the video is swap the drive back and do a fresh install. Um, but for now, I want to see what's on this drive. That way, it saves me hooking up an entirely new machine to um, prepare another install drive. So if this drive is fine, um, if the drive that I'm about to put in is fine, then I can swap back and sort the other drive, if that makes any sense. Now, Tiger being stuck at the blue screen could be various things. It used to happen to me back in the day, and I could boot up to my OS X install media, my OS X install DVD, and repair the disk permissions within disk utility, and then everything would be fine. Now, it could be a whole number of things. Not too sure. Man, these Molex connectors over time can get really stubborn. Really, really stubborn. You've got to just force them out. It can get really, really bad. Okay, there we go. So this is the drive that is uh, sitting on the blue screen. It is a Seagate. Uh, what are we? Let's take a little look. Apple branded 60 gig drive. So I was incorrect. That is a 60. And the other one that is not branded, but it is a... Uh, Seagate drive as well is a 160 gig drive. So this is actually a 160 guys um, Very interesting plug the thing into the thing 
plug the other thing into the other thing. That is IDE. Boom, job done, close her up. Awesome. Okay, so plug the power in. I was totally unaware that this was a 160 gig drive. Power it on. Now, I have got a bit of confusion as to what drive is what. Now this 160 may be the one drive that I have not tested, I'm not too sure. As you can see, we're booting into at least some kind of version of OS X. I believe it to be Tiger. I believe all of these have Tiger on them. Um, yes, Mac OS X. This is the one that's booting up. This, this drive is noticeably quicker. Okay, so, cool. We've got Mac HD. And yes, I have been tinkering with this before because as you guys can see, Harry Potter. I did play Harry Potter on this in the, uh, in the video. So now I remember. Graphics, ATR Radeon 7500 and 32 megs of VRAM. I remember now, okay, cool. So this drive, this 160 gig drive appears to be working fine, um, but it's not an Apple original drive. I do have another Apple original drive to put into it, which I may do. I may clone the drive over. I may go and get that other drive and try it out and see what's happening there. So we're gonna rename this uh, Macintosh, Macintosh HD uh, non-Apple, just so we can remember. That is working well, but curiosity has got the better of me. So if worst comes to worst, what I'm gonna do is clone the contents of this drive to this drive. Um, but right now I want to get the Hitachi drive, the Apple branded Hitachi drive, and try that one out. So guys, this is an IBM DeskStar drive, Apple branded 40 gig. That came out of the machine that is now my Hackintosh. So hopefully that clears up any confusion. Basically what I'm doing now is, wow, how is this drive, how is this drive held this, whoa, check, what? Did I do this? No, I wouldn't have done that. This drive is mounted in completely incorrectly. Wow, okay. Maybe they were missing the original screws, but at least put one screw in each side of the drive. Let's remove that drive and put in this one. So then at least we know what's happening. The drive that's in the machine at the moment, which is just about to come out, is a full working version of OS X. It just needs updating. Open up the machine. We're gonna lift you guys up. This is a proper old school IMNC video. So this works, but it's not an Apple original drive. For some reason, the whole machine is original, so I'm quite inclined to have Apple original drives in them to be sold with. I just think that's cool. Apple, uh, Apple branded original drives. So, plus that, that other one's a 160, so it could be useful somewhere else down the line. Let's see what's happening on this drive. Now, I believe I played Harry Potter on two installs, so this could well be that other install. Okay, let's try again. Boot up the machine, and once we know what's happening with this drive, we know what is happening with all the drives. <laughs> Listen to that one, guys. Noticeably louder. Um, that is a year older. That's a 2001 stamped drive. So pretty old and it's got the racket to go with it. So display has signal. And what do we have? Gray screen, followed by drive sounding a little bit scrapey. So we have no question mark folder yet or anything of that nature. Let's try restarting the system. Ooh, hang on, hang on. Okay, question mark folder with a finder. So looking at the drive jumper settings, at the moment they're on cable select. Um, I believe this was the machine that had the 160 Western Digital in it as well. So what I'm gonna try doing is moving the jumpers to the master position, the 16 head master position, just to see what that does. I have a choice between uh, 16 head or 15 head, so I'm gonna go with 16 on a master and see what that does. Um, so I'm going to move that, and if there is an OS on here at all, it should then boot up. Apple logo, excellent. I knew there was an OS on this drive. 10.4.6, so this is a couple of Tiger Revisions updated from the other model. Um, as you can see, it's got network access, Mac OS update, that's the latest Tiger and the latest Java. Um, to be honest, what I may do, it's connected to a wired network, so 
This is only mm, under 250 meg. I might just update that now because there's no, ah, name, Tom Smith. Interesting, it's got, oh, wonderful. I set this up myself. Great stuff. So I'm going to install these updates because there's no harm in doing so right now. So there's the Seagate Apple branded drive screwed into the Quicksilver that does not have a power button uh, board at the moment. Waiting for a rainy day or I get my hands on a power button and then we can pretty much do the same process with this one. Although this one will need a little bit of cleaning up and then we can flog that one. And that leaves me with a spare 160 gig drive. This does have a working copy of OS X on it at the moment, but I probably won't be keeping it on there. Um, or I may, may come in handy, who knows. Interesting guys, Java is actually not installed, it's got a little um, exclamation mark. Now I may be wrong, but I'd assume that with these older operating systems, the links um, to the downloads that Software Update actually has um, are going to soon stop being supported. Um, I'm not sure how long older OS incremental updates are going to be available, but I have installed them from Panther and that um, over the last few years, so it's kind of cool that they're still available. Hopefully someone somewhere is archiving all this stuff so that we can still play around with this in 20, 30 years time. Well guys, we're a little bit stuck at the moment. Um, the computer is very unresponsive and it seems to be trying to install the update, but we've been sitting here for a while. I am going to leave it run, um, but I'll probably come back to this video tomorrow or the day after or whatever because it's taking so long. I believe the hard drive is the bottleneck. It sounds pretty scrapey and it could be on its last legs. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. So everyone, it's a couple of days later. Um, I've been a little bit too busy to fiddle with this Quicksilver, but I've got a little bit of free time today, so I thought I'd revisit it because I really do want to get this sold and out of the way because right now it's dominating my desk. So. What basically happened was I was updating the software, as you guys saw. I was trying to get it up to the latest version of Tiger. That was my primary focus, so uh, OS 10.4.11. And as you guys saw from the last clip, it was taking a long time. To cut a long story short, it basically froze and was very unresponsive. Like, I'd click on a Finder window, for instance, and it would take about three or four actual minutes, you know, like a couple of hundred seconds, for the for the finder window to pop up. So I thought there's something weird going on here. So let me show you what the machine is doing now. Now, this is quite understandable because the hard drive is old and it's been standing for quite some time. So as you guys can see, uh, we've got a folder with a question mark, which normally pops up to begin with on these slower drives, but then it wipes down and you get the Apple logo and it boots into OS X. Well, the drive is still installed. It's spun up, as you guys can hear, but we are not booting into OS X. So I believe that the drive has basically surrendered its sort of last working amount of effort for us in that previous um, part of the video. Now, I'm not too sure whether it's the drive that's actually broken or whether something else has gone wrong. Now, what I will do is check the IDE cable, just in case for some reason I didn't push it in all the way. Um, but I can't imagine that really being a thing. But we'll give that a go. And then, if not, we will change the drive for a completely different drive. I do have other um, drives with an Apple logo on them, so we'll take a look in my little box of drives. Although I have cleared out a load of my stuff recently, I should still have something that will be suitable for this machine. So, just as I suspected, um, the IDE cable is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong there. So, we're definitely going to take this drive out. Now, if I had more time, I would try and troubleshoot the drive. Maybe fresh install, fiddle with the jumpers. Um, although, I did put it on master, so I don't think there'll be any, anything wrong with those. Um, but, what I'm saying is, I'd give it a little bit more of an effort. But, for now, it's just easier for me to stick a new drive in and maybe I might have another drive with an operating system on it with a bit of luck, especially if I pick a drive that's got an Apple logo on it. It's likely that it's come out of one of these Power Macs before. Um, but if not, we can do a quick install of Tiger on this video. That's not a problem. I don't mind things that take a long time like an OS install because I can get on with other things while it's doing it, but I just can't sit here and troubleshoot the machine. So we have the drive. We'll take the drive out of the caddy in a second, but one thing that I did order, and I can't believe I ordered it, but this just shows my love for these machines. Now, something that you guys are probably aware of is the fact that these machines now are worth no more than 20 or 30 pounds. But I still spent five pounds on a battery for this thing. So 
or however much it was on eBay. You used to be able to get these Power Mac batteries for a really good price, but you can't get this exact spec battery for a good price anywhere these days. If anyone does know of anywhere that you can get them, please let me know. So I'm gonna take this battery out because I suspect that it's dead because I do get the clock warning every time I start up the machine. So new battery in there will sort of help eliminate some problems, I think. So that's clipped into there. We're gonna leave the machine open for now. We're gonna keep this battery in this bag and put it away because this may be slightly less dead than another one so it might be useful for testing purposes if the mach if another machine is acting up i can uh, i can use this battery for testing so what we're going to do now is dig out my hard drive collection which has shrunk by about 20 drives in the last couple of months because i've just been giving them away and you know throwing some away and whatnot um because as you guys know, I basically used to save every hard drive from every broken PC that I had. I just thought it was cool, but I've still kept a few, so let's take a look. So I've got this little box that holds any hard drive that isn't ultra important to me. Um, so these are mainly uh, IDE drives from old systems, like I said. So there are a few in here, not so many as I used to have. So let's take a little look. First off, we have a Slimline Maxter drive with no Apple logo on it. We have a Maxter drive. Uh, with no Apple logo on it that's from a PC, that's 60 gig. I don't believe that drive is functional. Laptop drives obviously do not count. Laptop drive. Over here we have a Maxta 80 gig drive that does work. This used to be in my old Quicksilver as a secondary drive. I got this hard drive from a car boot sale for three pounds. Um, and believe it or not, I used to store video editing projects on there for iMovie 06, if anyone cares about that. Here we have another Max to Slimline drive. Uh, this one is 40 gigabytes. And now this one is interesting. Max to Slim, but it's got an Apple branded logo on it. And the capacity of this one is also 40 gigabytes. So we're gonna put this one in the maybe pile over here. And that could be our only contender. What else do we have? I do have some other drives upstairs. That's a graphics card, that's a... This is an awesome card. These are handy if you have uh, if you don't want to put SATA controllers in um, to old Power Max. If you've got the 128 gig limit, this is one of those IDE cards that's bootable within OS X that'll allow you to install big drives in a Power Mac. And the reason I've got that is because it came with my MDD. Although an MDD doesn't need it, laptop drive, it was there with these two drives, which I'm still waiting to find a really cool use for. These are 250 gigs of pop, Maxter, IDE, fully functional drives. These were in RAID 0, absolutely awesome performance for IDE, and I am putting those there safely. So, at the moment, the only contender that we have with an Apple logo on it is this Maxter drive right here. And if that doesn't work, we're going to have to surrender and use a drive without an Apple logo on it. You guys probably think I'm quite odd anyway, wanting to use a drive with an Apple logo on it because it makes absolutely no sense. But the way I see it is, this Quicksilver is complete original stock Quicksilver at the moment and it would just be cool to keep it that way. Although I'd be changing the hard drive, at least I'd be putting a drive in that had came that had come from Apple um, in the factory before, so that's great. One thing that I am going to do guys, because as you can tell I have no organisation at all when it comes to my hard drives. I've got these little red stickers. What I'm going to be doing is when I fiddle with PCs and stuff, I will get a better system eventually. I'm going to start sticking these red stickers on the top of the drive. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean that the drive is broken or anything. That just literally tells me that it needs my attention in some kind of way. Now, like I mentioned, I don't have the time to fiddle with this drive at the moment and the install that's on this drive. So I've stuck a red sticker on it for now. And that means that I need to take a look at it. So just showing you guys that the Maxter drive is indeed now screwed in. I borrowed the jumper from the... Um, the other drive that we took out and also the last IDE pin on the bottom row uh, closest to the jumpers was a little bent so again I used one of my favorite tools the bendy needle nose pliers and just straightened it out a bit. Do you know what I'm hoping for is a stroke of luck guys if someone upstairs is feeling kind hopefully I'll boot this up the drive came out of a Mac before obviously it did it's got an Apple logo on it it's got an OS on it it works job done let's see it must have some kind of OS on it, but knowing my luck, I had it at a time of having limited drives and I used it in a PC or something. Guaranteed I did. I bet I erased it. I bet I formatted it. Come on, give me an app logo or something. Why haven't we got video now? 
Okay, question mark folder. Is it going to boot up into an OS? It's got no OS. No OS on it. Oh, blinking heck. Okay, fair enough. I was being hopeful, thinking that there may be an OS on that drive. Um, depending on whether you like loud hard drives in your retro computers or not, this hard drive is a lot quieter, but it does have that noticeable sort of whiny, high-pitched sound that these slim Maxter drives have. Um, bear with me guys, I'm going to dig out my Tiger DVD and let's pray that the DVD drive in this thing works. Oh, and also let's pray that it's a DVD drive in the first place and not a CD drive, otherwise we're going to be installing Panther on this thing. So, let's shut it down and boot it up holding the mouse button so that we can put in Mac OS X Tiger PowerPC DVD Edition. I just snapped the case. Excellent. Excellent start everybody, excellent start. There is our optical drive opening in a nice speedy manner. Let's close that and see if it reads a DVD. The disc hasn't spun up. Let's turn the computer off, turn it on again. I'm going to hold, hold down option just to force it to go into a boot menu. Okay, here we are in the boot menu, of course. And just waiting. Folks, this optical drive is doing a whole lot of absolutely nothing. So, I'm going to retrieve my disc and I was going to, like I mentioned literally a couple of seconds ago, I was going to put Panther on this because I've got the CD version, but I can't be bothered to wait for it to install because of the swapping discs. I believe there's like three or four discs. And so I'm going to put a DVD drive in this thing for now. And then I'm having it back because this DVD drive is worth more than this entire machine. Reason being is because that is pretty much the fastest IDE DVD burner that you can put in a Power Mac. It's come from my MDD. I used it in my Mac Pro a little bit because I had Lightscribe projects. And the optical drive. You know what? I can't be bothered to wait for this to load, guys. I am literally going to just take it out. I'll use a pin to change it. And then we can actually see what this DVD drive is. I should have checked what the DVD drive was when I booted the machine up into a working hard drive. So this is certainly turning into a little bit of a saga, um, which is totally fine by me because oh come on Tom come on focus because at least I know with these PowerPC Macs that once you're done fiddling like this they're gonna work you know I know this stuff I've worked on these before and if, if the DVD isn't reading change the DVD drive it will read uh, if the hard drive isn't working change the hard drive it'll be fine there's never anything really wrong with the machine itself other than you know the really unlucky times with MDDs where the, the power supply is blown or whatever but I just don't mind working on these because every story is the same nearly every power Mac that I've got including the G5 that I've got upstairs right now has come and okay the hard drive is crappy let's change the hard drive okay put a new hard drive in ah it hasn't got an OS on it of course so let's install an OS put the DVD in the DVD drive is not working so let's change the DVD drive and you know I know People like Will the Plank will know exactly where I'm coming from with that. It looks like a big hassle when you're watching it on video, but it really isn't. It just is what it is and you expect it from the PowerPC Max. Now, of course, it would be easier if we didn't have to do this, but then it wouldn't be so entertaining for the channel, would it? So let's think of it like that. Okay, so that is us. Screws out. We can now yank the whole thing off and pull out the cables and, of course, change the optical drive itself. No wonder it didn't install my operating system. This is a CD rewriter. We better change it. So everyone, DVD drive is in. Let's retrieve our DVD. We'll be putting that back in to sell the machine just to avoid any confusion. If you do want to buy this machine off me on eBay, if I do put it on eBay, um, it will not come with this awesome DVD drive. When I say awesome DVD drive, it's as awesome as an IDE DVD drive can get. It's, not really that special. Basically, the story behind it was when I was doing up my dual 1.42 gigahertz MDD, I wanted a really nice optical drive in it because I was sick of optical drive related issues. So I went on OWC and got the fastest model that they provided for old Power Max uh, with Lightscribe. So this is meant to be a really nice drive and from, from my own personal experience I do find it to be a very nice drive. So. The Tiger DVD is in. Here we go. Apple logo. It's going to take a while. Yes, there we are. Drive is spinning. Lovely. Sorted. We should, in theory, if this hard drive works, be able to install Tiger on this machine. Now we're talking. That is one professional angle right there, folks. Okay, here we go. 
booting up into Mac OS X PowerPC DVD installer. And language, so that has actually booted up fairly, uh, fairly quick. Okay, use English as the main language, go. Mac OS X. Now, let's do the crucial part and find out if this drive is recognized by the system. I really hope it is, because I don't want any faff. What did I press there? Choose startup disk. Hang on a sec. I messed that up. I pressed the total wrong thing. Disk utility. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes, folks. So we have the hard drive showing up there. Wonderful, wonderful news. And the drive is ready for us to use. That means we can proceed with the installer. Continue, continue, agree. Select our drive, it's got a green arrow, continue. Let's customize the install so that we don't do that, we don't do that, and we actually, how big is that? 129 meg, we'll do additional fonts. We don't do languages, uh, so we have saved on quite a bit there, but we are gonna do X11, because it's always nice to have X11 handy. There we go, Mac OS X, uh, Tiger is installing. I will keep an eye on the install. We will skip checking the DVD, and hopefully I will catch the intro video on camera because I've got this plugged into the good old sound system as well. So it's literally just finishing up now. This optical drive and this hard drive are both, report, are both performing really, really well. And um, this install has taken roughly about 11 minutes, which is very, 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 very good. Of course, the bottlenecks in this system are basically the system buses, the ATA buses themselves. Um, but there's a lot that you can do with these old Power Macs with the PCI section. These big 64-bit PCI slots are very handy for the SATA cards and the USB 2 cards and the Wi-Fi cards, all sorts of things. Um, and, you know, the graphics cards that you can squeeze into these Quicksilvers and MDDs are still, they can still hold up really well to today's decent quality integrated graphics and low-end video cards. So you can get things done on them. Uh, it's just the support on the software side of things that is that is a bit lacking, obviously. But I try not to get into chatting about the support of PowerPC and stuff during these videos because I try to assume that everybody is aware of the current state of PowerPC. I've done my fair share of trying to share my opinions of uh, of how the the platform is doing and that, but I feel like I'm going to get interrupted by a by an intro video in a second. But yeah, I just get flamed by fanboys every time I make a video like that. And also those people over at Mac Rumors that really, really pissed me off as well. But we're not going to get into that. By the way, the Tiger intro video is my favourite uh, OS X intro video of all time. But the music is my favourite in Panther. Here we go. <laughs> Every single time that gets me, folks. Every single time. Okay, United Kingdom. If anyone is not aware, Tiger was the was the operating system that was current when I switched to a Mac. So, Tiger holds a very, very uh, soft place in my heart. Now, even though Tiger holds a special place in my heart for nostalgic reasons, putting all of that aside, I do believe that it is one of the best versions of OS X. Obviously, it's not usable as a main OS these days. Uh, name Mac. Uh, Macintosh. Mac. No password on this system for now. So, there we have it, folks. That is Mac OS X Tiger. I'm gonna eject my DVD. We will be changing the DVD drive back. I probably won't record that because you've already seen that process once. Let's close that up. At least I know that my Tiger DVD still works. Let me just double check what version this is. If I have any sense, I would have burnt the latest version but guaranteed I didn't. No, I burnt anything but the latest version. This is bare, stripped back, 
Mac OS X Tiger, the original version. So everyone, it is the third day of me working on this Power Mac. Um, even though I haven't spent that much time on this, I definitely know that I've spent more time than the machine is actually worth, but I've got to look at it in a positive way, and the positive things being, it'll clear a lot of space for me because it's a whole desktop tower gone and there'll be one soon to follow after it. And of course, I'll be making a really cool video, this one, I mean, uh, that you guys are hopefully enjoying. So, what I've basically done today, in the last five minutes or so, is uh, take these screenshots. And if I just open them up here in preview, you can see that the first one is the obligatory about this Mac screenshot. Uh, the next one is a full desktop shot, so that shows, you know, the hard drive on the desktop as well as the applications. Then I've got the graphics, and then I've got the get info on the hard disk showing the capacity in the available space. So that is basically all you need. I would do an ATA bus one, but I forgot to do, uh, forgot to take the optical drive out. So I'm gonna have to shut the machine down again and yank out the optical drive, which isn't a big deal. So the original CD drive is back installed into the machine. So that means I am now done with everything on the machine. All I need to do is test out the CD drive with an actual CD, I'll do that in a second. But first what I wanna do is just show you guys the auction because I said I would share a few things. Um, I've basically just done the description for now. So it covers a little bit of description about the machine. It also mentions the channel and the fact that this machine is coming from me because um, it's quite likely that if you're looking for PowerPC Mac on eBay, if you're interested in them, then you're also looking at them on YouTube and you've seen my videos because my Power Mac videos are littering um, YouTube Power Mac search results. If you scroll down, I have a detailed breakdown of the specifications of the machine, including the software side of things. Um, so all the detail you could want and more there. Then I've got a couple more statements, well, one more statement about the machine there. Um, which states that I added a CMOS battery worth five pounds prior to listing, just so that the machine behaves correctly. And then this blue segment here gives optional upgrades. So if um, anyone's buying this machine, I can upgrade it for them before they leave, before it leaves me. So you have the choice between, or you know, you can have all of them if you want, but 80 gig drive um, for a 120 gig storage in total, a 160 gig drive for 200 gig storage in total. That is a USB 2.0 PCI card upgrade, a airport PCI card upgrade, airport compatible, a DVD reader drive, and a uh, super drive. I do have a spare super drive and DVD reader drive that work in PowerMax. So I could provide any of that. The only thing I can't provide is another 512 stick or another two 512 sticks. Because even if I do have some upstairs, um, I would like to save those for my other Quicksilver that I'll be selling. Scrolling down, um, we just have a couple of statements then talking about the fact that I don't accept returns. Uh, includes UK power cable, but does not include keyboard and mouse. Um, let's have a look. Uh, talking about the channel again, saying how the money that I raise from here goes back into the channel. Then terms and conditions, ask any questions, blah, blah, blah. I reckon that's quite a damn good write-up for a 13-year-old computer that isn't really worth anything. So I've, I've worked far too hard on all of this uh, to justify it. But I do hope, I do hope that I can earn maybe about 30 pounds from this system. That would be great, that would be really cool. I'm not hoping for much, I'm gonna start it at a tenner, I'm gonna leave the auction run for seven days, but that would be really, really good. That's good enough for me, folks, it reads the disc. Now all I've gotta do is transfer the screenshots to my MacBook so that I can list this item with the screenshots, and I am done. All I can do then is shut this machine down uh, take some photos and hope for the best. So we're all unplugged and photos are taken. I'm now uploading them. I've got 11 photos total, including the screenshots, and we're on the home stretch. Once this is done, it is done. So everyone, that concludes my 30 minute plus PowerPC video about this Quicksilver. Here we have it, lovely Quicksilver, decent-ish photos, nice listing. There will be a link to this down in the video description. Um, unless the buy it now price has been bought. Um, so if you don't see a link to it down in the video description, then you know it's sold. Um, but the video is coming out after this auction will be live for a couple of days. I wasn't gonna put a buy it now on, but I thought I might as well. No one's gonna go for it, it's a bit high, but you never know. So this will be starting at 6.30. It is currently three minutes past five, so I've got a little bit of time to wait 
reason I do 6.30 is just to give people a chance to get home from work and stuff so that bidding a bidding war is a little bit more uh, e a little bit easier to happen a little bit more likely to happen um, during the end time. So, before I ramble on any longer, huge thank you for watching everyone. I really do appreciate the support. Please feel free to check out my second channel that I've newly opened. There'll be a link to that down in the video description below. Also, please give me a thumbs up. It really, really helps me out. And please check out my other links in the video description to Facebook, Twitter, my eBay, all sorts of other places. Loads of exciting things happen all the time, so it's really important that you guys stay connected with me. Again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.